Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me this morning is one of our two great dietitians from High V. It's Amy, and she's back with a very fun topic. Amy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great today. Thanks. How are you? Good. I love the new background. That thing is uh, it's awesome. It's thanks. It's Wanted way to go better than something. mine. Something bright today. So yeah, changing. Well, red's up. my favorite color. That's probably one of the Perfect. reasons, you know, that it's awesome. <laughs> but uh, all right, today's uh, topic. This is so awesome. Uh, I'm excited. We're talking about potatoes, friend mm -hmm. or foe. I love that title. And this family loves the potato. And the potatoes maybe got a bad rap because of the starch or because of, you know, you can load it up with so many great things. But you're here to tell us that there's a way, there's a way that it could be your friend. Uh, so the potato, tell us about the potato. Yes, the potato, the much aligned, maligned potato. I feel like it's one of those things I'm constantly defending to people because like you said, it gets such a bad rap. There's so much misinformation out there. And so clients are coming in all the time saying, I heard from you know, whatever source they're getting it from, potatoes are bad, I can't eat them. So um, I'm here to set the record straight. You can eat potatoes and not feel bad about it. They actually have a lot of really good nutrition that most people aren't getting enough of, primarily um, potassium and fiber. So those are two things, you know, as Americans, we're really not hitting the mark on getting enough of those. And so that's really, you know, definitely the potato is bringing some benefits to the table. Yeah, you know, I would have never guessed on the potassium part of things that that would mm -hmm. be a, a, a piece to pull in. Uh, also, I see too on the somewhat, uh, is there something with the potato skins too that it seems like some of the fruits and vegetables out there when you're talking about skin uh, provides that extra nutrient. Uh, does the potato play in that same role? Definitely, yes. So the skin really is where you're going to find the, the majority of the fiber in the potato. And that's true of all fruits and vegetables. So if you think about, you know, the skin or in um, like your citrus fruit, those membranes and things like that, all of that, all of those components of um, fruits and vegetables are giving you that fiber, which really, you know, we as a, as a country are not great about meeting our fiber requirement for the day. So yes, with a potato, if if whenever possible, if you can leave the skin on, definitely you're going to get that extra fiber. If you take it off, you're not going to get as much fiber from it. That's really interesting because I think there's a misnomer out there. Jeremy is saying this. He doesn't know this for a fact, but that, mm -hmm. you know, people just kind of discard the, the skin. Like you're, you're do a baked potato, you carve the inside out and then Jim, I'm going to see you later skin. Yep. Um, but yes. you, Good you're here comment. to say that yep. you can clean those. You can clean it up really good. Do you have any recommendations so that, that people are, could start eating that if they wanted to, or, or, and we'll talk about ways of working the potato in your meals, but, uh, cleaning wise, uh, recommendations there. Yeah. And really you don't have to do anything special, really just water and scrubbing it really well. If there's any visible dirt, obviously you would just want to scrub it off. Um, if it has any um, imperfections or any bruising or those, sometimes you get the little eyes that start sprouting out of the potato, you can just cut those off. But yeah, out, other than that, no, there's really nothing extra you need to do to prep it. Well, the versatility of the potato is the sec. I mean, it, it is why the potato is amazing. You can do so many different things with the potato. Last night, we just had a meal where uh, we drizzled something on some really small cut potatoes, you know, had them fried in the pan. And it, it's another great way of doing it. But you're here to tell us, I mean, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think kind of our initial, when we think about potatoes, French fries is kind of that initial thing we go to, which maybe isn't the best in terms of health because it's fried. So, you know, thinking about some other ways to prepare potatoes baked is certainly a great way to go. Um, you, like you said, cutting them up and pan frying them, you could also just roast them in your oven, you know, toss them with a little bit of oil. I like to put some seasonings. Um, fresh herbs go really well on potatoes. So like rosemary is, is a spice I use a lot. You can even throw them on your grill. If you've got a grill pan or you could prepare a foil pack and put your potatoes on that way. And then, you know, classics like potato salad and things like that, um, you know, even mashed potatoes. So, yeah, I mean, 
you name it, there's a different way to prepare it. So it, it's something that won't get boring because you can constantly change up the way you're preparing it and then the, the spices and flavorings that you're adding to it. Now, certainly, uh, we've talked about Jeremy's he's a bigger guy here and uh, talking as a third person oh good we're really there uh anyway we uh, we have the potato and I like to stack the potato full of, you know if I'm going to do that classic baked potato I'm putting the sour cream I'm putting the cheese bacon the onion you're know, like Jeremy there might be some better ways to you know the potatoes filling for many reasons but uh there's mm -hmm. healthier ways too to, to prep the potato uh, to still keep the nutrients and, and the healthy part of that. So uh, what would you recommend a guy who's a steak and potato eater all the time? <laughs> so I would recommend maybe doing, you know, smaller amounts of some of those um, other toppings that we think about maybe as not your, your best choices, but maybe adding some other things in there. So some steamed vegetables, you um, like, you know, broccoli goes really well with that i also like you could take like a southwestern spin on it and maybe put some black beans corn a little bit of cheddar cheese and some salsa um and then you know even subbing in if you wanted to for your sour cream plain greek yogurt subs really well for sour cream so you could have top it off with with something like that so just varying your toppings a little bit um can definitely take it from you know not your best choice to actually a really healthy balanced you know yeah. And potatoes are filling. Uh, and I, this is an interesting one to me that I would have not actually thought about, but uh, it can help you for losing weight. Yes. Yes. I know who, who would have thought that, right? When we are no starting way. this. <laughs> so one of the things with, with weight loss that people really struggle with is that as they start to maybe cut back on their portions, then they feel hungry all the time, or they feel like a meal isn't as satisfying because it's not, you know, maybe as much as what they were used to eating before. So if you're eating foods that are really filling and that will stick with you for a while, it actually can help because you're not going to feel hungry as soon after you eat that meal. And especially keeping that skin in with the fiber is definitely going to help with that as well. And there is a balance here too. And I see that you have something here on the research. Uh, potato tends to be a little bit more salty than uh, some of the other foods like pasta or rice. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, potato, uh, research has found that potatoes can be a little bit more um, satiating or filling yeah, than some of those other carbohydrate foods. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, all right, uh, affordability of the potato. I mean, that's probably why it makes it the uh, most popular uh, uh, because you could get it down to just buying the potato down to it already pre-cut, whatever. Uh, but that that can help, and it works with so many different meals. Yes, and especially now where you know grocery prices have been increasing, that's something we're hearing from everybody every day. You know, groceries are getting more expensive, and so people are really looking for ways to keep that budget in check as they're planning out their meals. So, yes, potatoes are definitely always one of your more affordable things in the produce section. And, you know, like we had talked about with some of your different toppings, you know, having a baked potato bar as a meal, that can be a really affordable meal. So definitely something to um, slot into your meal plan as you're trying to keep your budget intact when it comes to groceries. And the sweet potato, I mean, we, we could talk about all the different potatoes and uh, there's a lot of great potato choices out there. We could probably just spend a segment on identify this potato, but we'll, <laughs> we'll save that. Uh, but uh, sweet potato is another good uh, offering uh, and kind of come up. I feel like it was never talked about and now they're there. Yes, yeah, so sweet potatoes get kind of a, um, a halo placed around them compared to white potatoes, especially. And really, you know, bottom line, they're very similar in nutrition. Though the, I would say one of the main differences is with a sweet potato, because of its orange color, you're gonna get more vitamin A. Um, that's what's, what's giving it its orange color a little bit. So with your sweet potato, more vitamin A, the white potato is gonna have a little bit more potassium than the sweet potato. But really, at the end of the day, they're both, really nutritious choices. So neither one is good, neither one is bad. There's no better or best. They're both options that you should and can include in your um, in your diet. Yep. Final question for you. It is 
grocery stores have, you know, you get, is are lucky enough to bring in products all the time. Does the potato have a certain season um, or it, it, for the most part, you're able to get potatoes year round in different choices of potatoes, but is there a better, better season for them? You know, I think of Wisconsin season, you know, it's, it comes at the end, just like everything does with corn and all uh, at the end of the year. But uh, what, uh, what is that season? Or is it just, uh, we're lucky enough that we get it year round? Yeah, that's a good question. And actually with potatoes, I would say we're lucky enough to just get those year round. You know, other produce definitely, like you said, has definite seasons where it's either more accessible or it's going to be better quality, but potatoes are pretty consistent year round. So again, you know, making them a really good choice um, for that meal plan. So I guess the, the answer to potato friend or foe is? We're going to go friend. Definitely. Your friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for breaking down the potato. I'm going to add it to uh, my menu again for tonight for sure. Thank you so much. We'll check in with you real soon. Actually, well, before we go, All right, uh, people want to get more information, Amy, where can they oh, find yes. that? Yes. Best place to go is to the hy website. You can go to hy slash health, and there you'll be able to find um, information about all of our nutrition services. All right. Thank you so much, Amy. We'll talk to you uh, next month. All right. Thank you. You bet. All right. Get those baked potatoes. Get Just get a potato on your menu tonight. And I like the idea of a baked potato bar just for a whole meal. I think that's a cool idea as well. We'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Pittsburgh.